It's an off day for the Cubs. And as we start July, the Cubs have lost 31 out of their last 48 games, and they find themselves ahead of just two teams in the National League. It's time to sell. We're going to talk about options for the Cubs as far as trades are concerned and more right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Great to have all of you guys with us as we talk Cubs baseball on a daily basis. Let's get this thing started. Here's your invitation to uh, the Cubs baseball channel. What do you say, guys? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel, and let's talk about Cubs trades. And I think there's a lot to get into right now, but uh, I'm Mick Gillespie, at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. We also have the Cubs Baseball Channel Twitter, so uh, make sure that you uh, check both of those things out. But uh, appreciate you guys being here. All right, so it's July the 1st, and the Cubs have – just 17 wins in their last 48 games, which means they've gone 17 and 31. And effectively, in my mind, I'm throwing my hands up, and I think it's over. You hear the players on the team now saying, hey, we got to win. We got to win. No, you needed to win, and you didn't. And now it's time to start thinking about the future of an organization moving, not to make the playoffs, but to win the World Series. And there's a difference. There needs to be direction with this franchise And it's not the direction of, you know what, we're going to dog it for two months and then we're going to push really hard at the deadline just to make it tough on the front office to decide whether to sell or buy. Saw it last year. And, and, And look, if they start to win now, too little, too late. It's time to move on. Uh, the Cubs right now effectively are ahead of two teams in the national league. And look at that Miami, and Colorado. And Miami made the playoffs last year. They were ahead of the Cubs. They looked at the roster and they said, you know what? We're not winning a World Series with this roster. We're dismantling this and building a franchise that can win it all. And I think that the Cubs are kind of in that spot. I don't know that they need a total dismantle. Some of you guys do. And I saw it in the comments section. But they've got to make some wholesale changes and they need to start making some moves and, and, and put a direction behind the organization. And the direction should be uh, guys like Owen Casey and James Triantos and P- Pete Crow Armstrong, who's there already, Michael Bush, you know, those type of guys. So who's out there to make deals with and who do teams want? All right, let's start right here. Cody Bellinger, now we know his contract. He's got an opt-out for next year. He's got an opt-out for the year after that, right? Isn't it two opt-outs, 30 million, 30 million or somewhere in there, and then it drops down a little bit. Uh, but he's a difference maker when he is playing his best baseball. Even when he's not his best, he's still a good player. And if I'm an organization and I'm looking for someone that might be able to help jumpstart my team or help maintain where we are right now and add another piece to it, Cody Bellinger feels like a really good fit. Last year's comeback player of the year won the uh, National League MVP for the Dodgers in 2019. He's got power, and he's a really good player. Uh, Excellent outfielder, center fielder, uh, good first baseman. You can also DH him. I know that the graphic doesn't have that on there, but he's a left-handed bat. He's been at the top of the mountain as far as players are concerned. Yeah, you're going to take a risk that he doesn't opt out of his contract. Maybe you want him to stick around. You know, who are teams that would be interested in him? I think the Yankees. I think that the Phillies, with all of their injuries, I know maybe not another left-handed batter, but right now they don't have Kyle Schwarber. They don't have Bryce Harper. They're going to be without those guys for a little while. Maybe they're a team that could look for somebody like him. I could also see, just kind of along the same lines of outfielders, Uh, Some teams looking at Seiya Suzuki and going, you know what? We'd like him. 
I think the Phillies might be a player for Suzuki. I think the Mariners are a team that the Cubs have kind of been linked up with here recently, could be a player for someone like Suzuki. The, the Mariners have the pitching. They don't have the offense. Maybe there's a blockbuster deal to be made there where they say, you know what, we're going to take on these salaries because we can. You know, we do have the money to do that, and, and it's just going to make our offense match our pitching, and we have a chance to win. But I think Cody Bellinger, of all the Cubs players, is probably – the most desirable guy. And, you know, I there wasn't a big push for him as far as signing him as a free agent. But at the same time, now teams are in the mix and he could be available again. And I think that maybe the Yankees are probably looking at him the hardest because they love star power in New York. Absolutely love it. Don't be surprised if the Mets don't try to slide in on some of these as well. But we're going to leave it right there. All right, Nico Horner. Could Nico Horner be someone that a team wants? Played shortstop before the Cubs went out and signed Dansby Swanson to that big contract. Played second base, won a gold glove there. So he's an infielder. He's a very athletic player. He hasn't developed the power that we thought he might be able to. Line drive hitter. uh, Did homer yesterday, but hasn't been consistent with the power, although he has been consistent at the plate. And he's a guy that you can uh, count on to get on base some. And he can swing the bat. He squares the ball up. He's great in the clubhouse, plays the game the right way. And on a team of a a bunch of guys that seem to get injured all the time, he's stayed relatively healthy for the Cubs. So uh, I I could see that. And if you're the Cubs, he's expendable because you have other options for that position. Talked about it yesterday. Luis Vasquez could be someone. James Triantos, probably not this year, but soon. Matt Shaw, you just drafted him in the first round a couple of years ago. Second base is a spot he's played a lot. He's someone that you could put there as well. If you lose Nico Horner, um, you, you've got other options for that position, and that makes him expendable. Plus, he's going to be desirable for other teams. Hey, we just brought in a gold glove second baseman that's got some power from the right side at times, but he's a consistent hitter. So I'm not going to say that he's going to hit 20, 25 home runs, but you know he'll, he'll get in the one every once in a while, and he gets on base. He's a pretty good average hitter uh, when – you know, when he's doing his thing, Ian Happ has a no trade clause. Doesn't mean he can't be traded. It just means that he's got to approve it. you got to work that deal out with him if he wants to go. So who knows if he does or he doesn't, but Ian Happ is a really interesting guy. He's a goal, two-time gold glover. Now, if you look back at the Cubs, we talk about 17 wins in 48 games. I'd say the majority of those wins, right? So cut that down the middle. Ian Happ has been in the middle of helping the Cubs win. The problem is, is that no one else has really been in the middle of that. It's been Ian Happ has a big game. It's a home run in extra innings. Uh, you know, comes up with a home run down the stretch, like drives in some runs here or there. He's been very clutch in those games. Now, overall, his statistics aren't great. Lost the ball uh, yesterday. That cost the Cubs the game. He looked just distressed after the game about it because I think those guys really wanted to get this thing moving in the right direction and they lost again. And that's when you you show up and you go, you know what? Yeah. It's time to move on and start to figure out who the next guys are because I mean, barring a miracle that they are who they are and they are who we thought they were last year at this time, not the team that won all the games. They're the teams that, that limped into that spot and then, you know, gave us some fool's gold uh, and and the Cubs have set themselves back a couple of years because they bought into this group. But with that said, the thing I like about Ian Happ the most is that he absolutely kills the other teams in the division. Uh, the Cardinals, the Pirates, and the Reds, he wears them out. You know, So I'm sure they'd love to get him out of town. You know, maybe one of those teams might want to get him just because he's beaten him up so bad. But he's someone who the Cubs could move if he – it, it, it agrees to the you know to be traded because he's got again he's got the no trade clause but the but the thing with the cubs is that the, and this was a signing that baffled me is that you have other options for left field alexander canario yes yeah, swing and misses but power plays a pretty good defensive left field let him get in there and get comfortable he could fill in and do that job right uh, you you also if you put Pete Crow Armstrong in center Mike Tockman can play left field when he gets back Cody Bellinger could play left field right now. Um, you know, maybe eventually Kevin Alcantara could play left field. He's the guy that the Cubs got in the Chris Bryant trade. Who knows? But the Cubs have options. They've also let some guys go that might have been able to help them in that area. 
including Jonathan Perlaza, who uh, you know wasn't on the 40 man and then, and and then eventually signed in Korea. Uh, also, uh, maybe Brennan Davis. I mean, he's been on the 40 man. You know, why not throw him out there? So if you get rid of Hap, you got other options in that position. It's one of strength for the Cubs. So uh, another guy to keep an eye on. Now, you guys always want to know who are my untouchables. Who are your untouchables? Who are the guys you would not get rid of? It starts with me with the young guys, Pete Crow Armstrong and Michael Bush. Pete Crow Armstrong still learning to play baseball at the major league level. The bat isn't quite there yet, but the speed is, the defense is. He turns a single into a triple. He's one of the fastest guys in the game. You, you have seen the flashes of what this guy can do. Now, this is the beginning of a, a really big transition for Pete Crow Armstrong. And I'm thinking that he's going to continue to get better as he faces major league pitching. Uh, I think eventually he'll be able to hit. I don't know how well he'll be able to hit, but with that speed and his glove, he's very valuable for the Cubs. And Michael Bush, he's making the transition. Blew up things in AAA, tore up the league. You see flashes of it consistently getting better every day. It's a tough transition. Craig Council has uh, a few different times said, hey, this guy's having a really good year. And then Justin Steele. Uh, Justin Steele was a contender for the Cy Young Award last year. I love the fire that he showed the other day. Maybe it was frustration, but the fact that the guy cares, I think that on a good team, uh, he potentially could be an ace or a number two guy in the rotation. And I mean on a good team where you have lots of good pitching. Guys you could get rid of, though, Kyle Hendricks, he's, if someone wanted to take a chance on him, uh, you're probably going to have to take all the salary. But maybe you could get rid of him to somebody. I don't know, after that last outing, maybe not. Uh, but the fact that the guy knows the game so well, and I said it after watching his postgame press conference uh, uh, yesterday, I think he'd be a great pitching coach. And it's almost like having an extra coach with him out in the you know part of the rotation in the bullpen, wherever he's going to be. I doubt anyone's going to take him, though. Jamison Tyone's had a really good year. He's got, what, two more years left on his contract. Maybe you trade him. If someone wants him, that means starting pitching is valuable. Javier Saad could have been a guy, but now he's injured with the, the right forearm, so probably take him off of the table. Uh, Hector Neris signed a one-year contract. Uh, I bet you somebody will take him. I mean, because, I mean, I know he's been heart attack uh, Naris, right. But a uh, heart attack Hector, but at the same time, he, he, he can pitch, you know, and the numbers aren't that bad for him and teams are going to be looking for relief help. You're not going to get rid of Dansby Swanson. He, it, the, the contract's too high. And I just don't think anybody's going to want to pay him. I don't think that, I don't think anybody wants to pick up all those years. And I don't know that his production would even, uh, it would, would even merit someone making a deal for him. And, uh, and, you know, maybe some other guys out in the bullpen. But uh, all in all, I don't think the Cubs have as much to give as they did last year. And I think that's why they missed an opportunity, because last year they were in perfect position to absolutely take advantage of the market. We'll see how things go, though. The, the more teams that are in the mix now is going to make it better for the Cubs because there's going to be less teams that are going to want to make deals. And I think that some of the, the big market teams and teams with money and teams that really feel like they have a chance and are dealing with injuries like the Phillies are going are gonna to be willing to go out there and roll the dice on some of these Cubs players. Now, team to, teams to watch, final thing. The Yankees for sure. I think the Yankees are in to win it. I think that that front office in New York, after the way that things have gone lately, they expect that team to go out there and win the World Series. They show up every year to win the World Series. They, they don't think it's a successful year to get to the championship series and lose. You have to bring the pennant, and then you need to win in New York. I wouldn't be surprised, though, with the Mets. Ever since Grimmis showed up, they are one of baseball's hottest teams. And, and their owner has basically taken over as the new George Steinbrenner, not afraid to go out there and spend money not afraid to make deals and trade players away. Now I knew that, you know, that they, they have a, a front office that is uh, constructed now, or at least trying to construct themselves like Milwaukee. Maybe they'd be a more patient with their prospects, but I just wouldn't be surprised if they went out and, and started to get in this mix. If they know that this is a real deal for them to contend, 
Other teams talked about the Phillies already. They're, they're dealing with injuries to some of their star players. They're still one of the best teams in baseball. I, I just could see a Seiya Suzuki going there. I think that uh, Philadelphia is one of those teams that would really like to tap into that Japanese baseball market. And also they would get a, maybe a, a pretty good trade, a pretty good player with Suzuki if they got the guy that the Cubs had at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year. The Texas Rangers. Uh, the Rangers – are the World Series champions. And I know that it has not gone well for them so far, but they're starting to get healthy. And I could see them going out, not Ranger, Rangers. And I got to apologize to you guys, talking about a, a misprint. Yesterday it said seven runs in the seventh. That that got messed up somehow. It was supposed to be seven runs in the fourth. So anybody that watched that video. Anyway, Seattle Mariners have money. They expect to win this year. They just haven't been able to generate offense. They fired their batting coach. and And now it's like, hey, What's the next thing? Well, maybe you take advantage of the trade deadline and you go out and you make some deals. That's where we are right now. Guys, uh, Anthony will be on in the morning. Make sure that you guys watch his show. Tell me in the comments section what you think. Are there some teams that we should expect that aren't in there yet, like the Dodgers? Could the Dodgers be going, hey, you know what? Let's bring back Bellinger. I mean, how crazy would that be? Uh, but, But they've dealt with some injuries. They have a really good roster. How about the Orioles? What about Baltimore? They've got a great roster. Would they go out and make a deal for one of these Cubs guys to help them get over the hump? Uh, they were terrible last year in the postseason. Uh, you know, so you look around. What, what about Cleveland? You know, what do they have to trade? They're one of the surprise teams, but are they really there to win the World Series? Or are they just going to win that division? Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel again. Appreciate you guys so much. Love you. Thank you for being here on the show. Like and subscribe, and uh, go Cubs. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. 